kill flows, Nintendo Switch. I'm on some shit that's monumental, monumental, artificial intelligence. Jotted down on scribes, the last of a dying breed. They wonder how I survive. Turpentine, turn the tide. Go. what's going on everyone this is your boy ash the man and what's going on so in this video you're going to get my thoughts on nomad megalobox 2 which is the second season of megalobox now before i go ahead and get started spoiler alert there's going to be things that i'm going to be talking about from the first two episodes of the season so please click off the video if you don't want to know about it if you don't care if you already watched the episode this is the place to be and we're about to go ahead and get started now as Megalobox Season 1 ends, Joe, our Gillish Joe, had become the champ of Megalobox and Tournament. Yes, Joe was on top of the world. He was the man. Nobody could tell him nothing. But seven years has passed, and Joe looks like, shit, what happened? You were the champ. Now he goes by Nomad. So Joe goes into this depression where he takes meds. You see him drinking. He's a pill-popping animal. And we see him talking to Pops all the time. Is he doing mat? He is doing matches as Nomad now. Not Joe, Nomad. And he's doing it for money. He's not living like the champ he is. What happened in these seven years? Well, there is still questions about it. This is what we got so far. Now, we see him talking to Pops, which is confirmed to be hallucinations. Because in episode two, it is confirmed that Pops has passed on, unfortunately. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What happened to Pops? Still questions we do not have answers to, but yet he passed on. Nomad, a.k.a. Joe, fell into a depression and blames himself for Pops death. Now, I'm not sure what is the occasion for Pops death, but again, we don't know. At this point, we can say that this is what led him to his drinking and pill popping stage. Now, he comes across a character named Chief, and he adds another layer of creativity in the form of introducing the um, cast. Chief debuted in a fight with Joe in which it seems like it was going to win against Nomad, but overall, he threw the fight for a check. Yes, he threw it for the fat check. But in the fight, he confirmed that Nomad, that he was their gearless Joe. This has led to a confrontation outside of the bar where the fight was held, and Chief displayed his skills as a boxer, in which he don't play no games. Now, I know you're thinking, like, why is this important? How does this answer things for us? Well, guess what? It adds another layer of things that is good. Well, this adds a path for Nomad to follow to get out of his depression and face his demons. Next episode, we went across two new characters, Mio and uh, Marla, Mama Son. Uh, Mio, um, he stole Nomad's bike. And, of course, due to some third party, Nomad was able to find Mio and... Me, Marla found out about the incident and wanted to pay Nomad back. In the midst of this issue, Nomad collapsed, you know, probably had a little bit of a withdrawal, woke up in Chief Trailer being taken care of by Marla. Now, him and Chief was able to have a sit down and Chief started to explain things out for him and and how his family looks up to nomad because when he was gearless joe he became an inspiration to his people you got to think about it gearless joe was winning over a lot of people you know his fight we um yuri still goes un unseen we only see glimpse of this during the first episode being that it went to round eight and it looked like yuri was going to win against joe but ended up joe winning against yuri but this is what asked interesting because we still haven't seen it now the way that um now the way that this uh set this up with chief is that now chief has his own issues in which because of the place they staying in is being auctioned which is like an old amusement park he is now trying to buy the amusement park the way that his people uh this reason why he's entering the megalobox terminal to begin with uh nomad nomad hears this and doesn't really care he gets his bike fixed and he refused to take the money from marlon and he leaves but later he comes back to offer chief help but chief had a condition he has to drop the mess in which nomad already did under chief conditions and that's where episode two kind of leaves off so it definitely does sound interesting to me and i am really impressed with the direction that they're going in with season two it, it's not like we're going to get like an over cocky version 
of Joe. We got Joe, which he's going into his other persona of Nomad, in which we know that we had a issue with Pops passing, in which they're probably going to um, talk about it a little bit more when we start seeing from some familiar faces, which I don't have a problem with that. Now, uh, Nomad probably has his problems to work out. But so does the new cast, and which definitely does add another layer of interesting things to go on now. I will say this. The artwork looks similar, but it adds a, a, a little bit of detail to appreciate the work and have returning fans really, you know, be familiar with the series. Sound quality has always been a good thing for it. So overall, I'm really hyped for season two of Megalobox Nomad, and we should be in for a run, y'all. I mean, honestly, this is what we're going to get. I'm happy with it. I'm ready for it. And I've been thoroughly impressed. So, again, thank you guys for definitely tuning in to my thoughts on uh, Season 2 of Megalobox Nomad. If you guys like the series, hate the series, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Other than that, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, show your boy that love. But I am about to be out. Thank you again for stopping for the video. And you guys have a wonderful day. Peace.